Hey everybody, welcome to the Krista and Ed show. I am obviously Krista. I'm Ed. Woo! Yeah. How's it going? So you know what, today we actually were just having our morning coffee upstairs and we had a really great conversation. I was like, you know what, we need to run downstairs right now and record this. Yes. So we were actually talking about, um, about sales, right? And um, Ed is actually you know, an expert in sales. Like he is just really good at building relationships and closing <laughs> deals. And um, it's actually like a superpower of his, right? And he's been walking around, you know, uh, the last decade that I know him, just like, what, what? Like, I, I don't even think realizing that he is really good at this. And it is a skill that a lot of people you know, don't have, but it doesn't mean that you can't develop it. Yeah. Right. So we were actually talking and I was like, Hey, Ed, I'm like, actually, to be honest, I asked you this question about five days ago and it's taken him five days to give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, no, like I want to understand this. I'm like, how many dollars roughly in sales have you personally closed? Okay. Right. So, you know, he started thinking about it and, and his careers and um, all the different, you know, companies that he's worked for or that he's had for himself. Yeah. And we started doing the math. Um, and it's actually very impressive. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm, a like, lot I'm a of, rock star. Well, I always knew you were a rock star. <laughs> like, Wait, oh, I got like a chain here. I put on my rock star outfit. So if you want to know, like, we'll talk about this <clears> after, <throat> but... Probably the biggest close of his life is sitting right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, this is not included in the okay. total of all the sales. Yeah. But anyways, I'm going to let him kind of talk to you about our yeah. conversation and, and just break it down and maybe give you guys some, you know, advice um, on selling and also, like, not to get discouraged because yes. there's a lot of no's out there that happen. But um, statistically, I mean your clients and customers like they are wanting and needing the services that you have yes so it's like it's your moral obligation to put that you know out there in front of them and um a lot of times they don't even know what you have so sometimes it's just on how you're packaging it or how you're selling it or a lot of times talking to the right people yes so yeah and i would and that's a great way to segue into this because there's objections and then there's and, and i guess the the way to think of it is there's an objection to listening. So when we were talking about this really large number that I've sold over my okay, career. Okay, what's the number? Let's just say it. Well, it's over $25 million that we can account for. So I was trying to go year by year and look and do calculations. So it's over $25 million. Which is probably even a low number. Um, it probably is. And that doesn't span my whole career, but I was just thinking of like, you know, more when I was at an executive level in what I was doing. So um, we pulled all that right because that's easier to track, right? Um, but, you know. It, How it, many of you can say that you have personally accounted for closing that much business? Okay. Yeah. And this is not like a one time, you know, yeah. $20 million no. offer. Some of this is like $300 here, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. And that, and that was, you know, and at the beginning of your career, you know, I kind of uh, think about it, it's like um, where you're, um, you know, doing business to business and you're really business developing, which technically is door knocking. You're going and knocking on a door and presenting an opportunity of some sort or collecting information about that ideal client or that who might be a good client and, and prospecting, right? And the stats are crazy. Like, it, it, you know, 80% of the people want to kick you out of the door when you come to just, just to say hi. And I'm not talking about like vacuum car, vacuum salesman or something like that. I'm talking, um, you know, when you're going in and, and you're, you, you, you have a business service and you're going into a business and you're knocking on that door or calling them, uh, usually 80% of them do not want to even, they object to listening to you. They, they don't even want to hear what you have to say. So overcoming that, and then when you take that share, that 20% that's left, and there's a little window there, and you have a connection, and now you have productivity to try to lead them and warm them up to have a relationship with you. You know, I know in a previous uh, business that I was in, in media, they said, you know, like, 
we want you to quote X dollars expecting that you're only going to close about 30% of it. So that's where I was like, okay, $25 million in sales. Like how many no's is that? That's probably 50 million no's or more or more that I've had over my lifetime, really, because that doesn't take into context, like just knocking on doors or phoning or emailing somebody and uh, them completely disregarding. That's more related to, you know, a third. That's only a third of the activity that probably closed out of all of this. So it's just, it's actually a massive number. I'm like, okay, well that's 365 days times uh, 20 years or whatever, and holy, I'm, I'm feeling old. <laughs> uh, you are getting old. <laughs> <you're my> king, <laughs> right? So, um, Anyways, I was like, you know what, we need to talk about this. Yeah. Because one thing for me, which is really funny, and I think this is, this. a lot of people listening to this will be able to resonate with this. I always, right away, would be like, I'm not a salesperson right? Because I had this stigma or this false belief or whatever in my head that if you were a salesperson, you were, you were greasy, right? <laughs> or no, I'm laughing, but it's true. I, you were always the exception though. For oh, some thanks. But I always thought like, you know, sales has to be pushy and sales yeah. has to be annoying. And, and, you know, um, I just had this, you know, belief that if I was trying to sell somebody, then I was, doing a disservice in a sense. Right. And when I started, um, you know, my first business, I actually realized throughout that journey, even though it was online, I started taking on, you know, the position and putting the hat on. I'm like, wait a minute. I am really good at sales mm -hmm. because there's so many different ways that you can also sell your product. And I was like, I am good at sales because you know what? I am getting people to pull out their credit card and give me their money they're investing in you that is not easy to do no especially online yeah. right but what i realized behind all of that was for myself you know i built a community within you know a facebook group i was nurturing you know relationships yeah. right and um started building a following of women and people who you know started to know like and trust me and essentially you know, those are very important components in order to, um, you know, do business with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? So after like going through that journey, I was like, oh my gosh, you know what? I am, I am good at sales. Mm -hmm. I am actually a salesperson and I need people to understand that it's, well, hopefully I wasn't the only person in the world thinking this yeah. way, but you have to stop thinking that way right away and start looking at what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're selling and how you can get it in front of as many people as you possibly can. Absolutely. Because people are sitting out there and they're waiting for it. They need yeah. it. They want it. Right. Yeah. Um, so you could have a life changing medical product that eases people's pain, uh, their health, their wellness, whatever it may be. And if you have a false belief about, communicating that to them of what you have, then you're doing them a disservice. It really is. I think that the, the key here is if you're passionate about what you're selling, like whatever, if you're selling something that you love and that you truly believe in, then it isn't really selling in a way. You're just showing features and benefits of something that you're passionate about and you're wanting to help them or you're wanting to grow their business or you're giving them a product or a service to help them have more exposure. Mm -hmm. So I think that like the salesman kind of thing, I've actually in a way, my mind has shifted in the last while, but I never really considered myself a salesperson. I, in a way I didn't, I'm like, what? I'm telling I you. I thought, I thought sales was your middle name no. until like last year. No, no. So I was I'm like, like Edward sales. I'm like, I should be wearing the baseball hat that says I'm the friend you haven't met yet. Like that's kind of like really, <laughs> right? Guys, and that, it was like, wouldn't that be good swag? That would be an awesome T-shirt. Oh, hey, I dropped it like a like a bomb right there. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it's like because I would meet people and go, man, this person is incredible. They have an awesome business. They have a life. They have a family. They're trying to feed, and I've got something that can help them do that. So that's where I think people would buy from me where they might not buy from someone else. Um, so everything I've sold, I've been 
behind. I don't think I've ever looked at anything and went, ah, oh. like if there was something that I wasn't aligned with, then I couldn't sell it. Like I wasn't that, I'm not that great of a salesman in that way. Right. And I remember a long time ago, a really interesting lesson. I think you could sell ice to Eskimos. Oh, <laughs> but, okay. I, don't, I wouldn't do that though. Why? I would, sell them, I would sell them fire starters, things oh. to keep them warm <laughs> okay, under the little fire. Right. Um, so going back to a career in the garment industry, um, you know, selling and I had a mentor for a period of time that was the company connected me with. And I remember traveling with this gentleman and, you know, we're in, in a hotel room in Seattle and he was just like, he's so elegant, good looking guy put together, you know, well-dressed and, and his tongue was like bold. Like he just had this ability to communicate and be very, he just felt, he came off really um, authentic, authentic, right? And so I remember him taking me, like he was my mentor for, uh, you know, several months traveling the West Coast of the United States. And, and I remember him saying one night after a client had left and we're in a hotel room, it was in Seattle, I think, and we're having uh, probably a glass of wine. And he was like, Ed, the secret to success is faking sincerity. And I thought, Ooh, this is just did not feel right. Like, it was like, are you kidding me? Like, really? Like, you're, you know, what would you say if I wasn't here? You're selling me. You're selling everybody. Uh, you know, what, what's, anyways, I mean, fate had it that months later, he was let go from that company and kind of, you know, went on his way or whatever. And so I actually think the secret to success is sincerity if you're sincere in wanting to help somebody or you've got something to give them to give to the world to make them better make their business better or make their family grow and flourish like how incredible is that mm -hmm. so I always was in a frame when I went and visited somebody that I was getting information to develop a relationship it wasn't actually like hey I'm going to sell something it's kind of like I notice I'll get people that'll a friend request and I go oh, okay they know these people and da, 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 and you're like okay I think they're, they're probably pretty cool I'll accept the friend request and then I immediately get a hard sell yeah. on a messenger and you're like really like I don't know you and I actually just delete those people I, I block know. them because it's just like I don't know you like if you want to say hey how are you doing and start to like like that you genuinely care yeah you genuinely care um then, uh, then, you know, there's something there, tangible, yeah. right? You know, it's funny because I, I've learned a lot too, like I said, over time with sales, but years and years ago, I um, was part of a network marketing company. And I have to tell you, you know, um, I think network marketing companies are great. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have had a lot of really yeah. good success with it. But one of the things that I feel like it, there's not at least for me anyways, it was like, it was more focused on the product when really where you're going to succeed in something like that is by building that team, which essentially goes back to building relationships. Yeah. I made the mistake too. I got so excited when I started this. I, I'm pretty sure I sent that email to like every single person on my friends list and then some. Yeah. And I haven't talked to them in years, yeah. right? And yeah. I remember being like, oh, why aren't they answering? Why aren't they answering? Why did they sell this stuff? <laughs> now that I'm on the other end, I'm like, oh my God, when I get those messages, I feel bad for people yeah. because I'm like, ah, oh, it's not even that like they're trying to do something wrong. I just know and I remember being so, feeling so desperate, wanting that sale, yeah. thinking that that was what was going to, mm -hmm. you know, make me all the money I needed or, yeah. or change my life. When really there's some fundamental, you know, steps that um, that you can that you can learn, and it and it's not like this building relationship thing is not um, it's not just for business. Like you make lifelong friends doing for sure. this, right? Yeah. Um, so we we haven't officially launched yet, but you're going to start to see some really cool stuff. Ed and I are um, going to start focusing on you know using our expertise <laughs> in sales and marketing. And all the connections that we've made, yeah. you know, all around the world and bringing the best of the best yeah. and talent to you guys and, um, you know, opening up. Actually, I don't know. I probably shouldn't say, but we, we want to help families. We want to help people just like us. Now we are working in business together yeah. and we know that um, 
we, we can help a lot of people and a lot of families to create that business mm -hmm. that, you know, they want or they have, and maybe they need some changes. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, to, to work with your spouses, right? Um, just that dynamic. There's a lot of things um, that you guys don't see, right? Yeah. Like the little things that we're fighting about before we turn the camera on, like lighting, right? I'll never in a headlock <laughs> and then the camera goes on and see, hey, everybody, how you doing? Yeah, hey. <laughs> and her hair always looks great. I don't know. Anyways, I always just, just do the friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And I don't know. Should I tell Yeah, them? you tell them. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a little secret of Krista's. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually getting ready upstairs and my yeah. daughter comes in. She's like, Mom, you look so beautiful. I'm like, thank you. She's like, are you going to change your pants? I'm like, why? She's like, well, you're going to do a video. I'm like, yeah, but I'm sitting down. She's like, but Mom, I'm like, Scarlett, this is another perk of being able to create your own life, work from home, you know, whatever. Yeah. When you go on camera... You need good lighting. Yeah. You have to do your hair in the front. Look, Some of us look do. Look at the back. The back isn't even honestly done. And you can still wear your pajama pants. <laughs> Woo! You can still be comfy. <laughs> Anyways. I'm not wearing pajama pants. So. No, he's not. I'm wearing pants, jeans. Anyways, we're, yeah. we're kind of rambling and getting off topic. Yeah. So, so the big thing here is everybody has a story. And we have people that are business owners and they want to grow. They want to be successful. It is a struggle to juggle that with your family, right? Um, or maybe your spouse or a significant other is in the business or in some component, or maybe they have no interest whatsoever, no passion. And so there's all these dynamics that come up with that. So we want to explore that because we have those dynamics. We both had different successful companies and, uh, and there were struggles with that. There was friction on both of our parts. Um, well, we've gone through a yeah. few different cycles. So when we first met, we were both employees. Yeah. Right. So we worked for, um, you know, other companies. And then um, Ed started his entrepreneurial journey before I did. So, and but I was also still an employee. Yeah. And I didn't like. I was always an entrepreneur at heart, in a sense, but you know, um, there's, there's things with that where it's like when, when you're a business owner and I totally get this now, I don't think I could ever be an employee again, to be honest, but like, it's so easy for there to be, you know, distractions and, you know, you still have to juggle your family, your kids, mm -hmm. your time. Right. I understand now that when you have a business, um, you know, despite what, the 1% of the unhappy customers, you know, say or leave reviews for you guys, you know, we are like the only people in the world who go to sleep at night, not only, you know, worrying and thinking about your family and, and how you're putting food on the table or what you're doing next, but we're also worrying about our customers and our clients and, and are we serving them at yeah. the highest level? You yeah. know, yeah. Um, we're not just shutting it off. Like you're taught in, corporate America, like, okay, work is work, home is home, and to shut it off. Entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. like, we can't do that. We're not even wired that way to do yeah. that, right? Yeah. So it can be very easy, you know, um, I'm talking about the dynamic before, you know, I entered into the entrepreneurial world where he was putting all his focus, you know, in business and all that stuff, and I didn't understand it, and I started to, you know, honestly get resentful in yeah. some ways, right? Yeah. Um, I was always, I think I was always very supportive, but I started to feel like, ah, oh, why is that so important? You know, like, what yeah. about me? What about us? What about, you know, mm -hmm. now I'm on the other side. I'm like, oh my God, you're talking to me. Ah, I'm trying to build a funnel. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah. so many dynamics that we have also gone yes. through just in life yeah. that I think that um, would be of value. And just for people to know and understand, like, they're not alone. This is real life guys. Like, yeah, we are. Another thing that's so funny is like, we are kind of opposites in a lot of ways. Like Ed is a morning guy. I am not a morning person, right? I have tried many, many times to like conform to being a morning person because that's what I'm told I'm supposed to do in order to be <laughs> successful, yeah. right? And I've, I fought this demon all the time, but my body won't allow me to like physically, like I can get up, but I'm not like doesn't feel normal to me. Like I don't feel good doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Adam, like, 
it's like me telling you that now you have to get up at nine o'clock every day. What's wrong? Oh, you're, you're bumping and and, he, and he's <laughs> like, I should, but he wouldn't be able to do that, right? Yeah. His clock is like, it's four, it's five, I gotta get up. It's 5 a.m., I'm up, and then so by 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock at night, all of a sudden, her gears and engine go into overdrive. It's like, and I'm like, sleeping, and I'm like, why I'm don't narcoleptic. you care what I'm I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like the kid in grade eight that's like really tired, so they're napping during math, where you're like, <sighs> and then she's like, hit me. <laughs> anyways, What's your problem? <laughs> anyways, like again, we're kind of just yeah. rambling here, but I'm just saying, like those are real struggles yes. and dynamics, especially when now we are trying to build a business and a brand together, and we still have children, yeah. and you know all these Life. other things in the middle yeah. of it. You know, to to really a get on the same page right and yeah. and it's an ongoing process for yeah. us and i think it always will be right but it's like okay learning to accept and be like okay like i'm not you you're not me yeah we don't think the same yeah. right and pu really pulling out those strengths and um you know um making it work together. Yeah, and interviewing people that are going through those same struggles, whether they're a, a couple that are in a business, or if you have one person that's the driving force and another person is kind of supporting them, or maybe their struggles with that, we want to we wanna explore that so that we can help you uh, on your journey in, in what you're doing, both business and personal. Mm -hmm. you know? so, 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 so the one thing that did come from this whole talking about the sales, you know, the $25 million was all of these no's. And so I wanted to address that because I read a stat not long ago and I gave it to a client that I'm coaching and was saying, you know, for their team, they had a team that are selling media. And I said, honestly, like 80% of the sale is in the 10th, 11th touch point. How many communications, whether you phone them, you sent them some information about their industry, you've called them, you've given them a quote or a proposal or whatever it may be. So what I'm saying to you guys is, so it's not all about the clothes. It's not all about meeting somebody really quickly and saying, here's what I have and I'm selling it. I, I, you know, it's sometimes listening. And believe me, I have, I have my struggles with listening. But when it comes to clients and you're engaged, I always am fascinated what people do. I've had tours, I've had the fortune to tour all sorts of incredible plants in many different cities and different people's operations. So I've always fascinated to go in the back and wander around and check out what they're doing and try to relate it to my past experience. And I think that's part of it. All of a sudden they're like, hey, this person genuinely is wanting to hear what I do and listen and wants to help. And so maybe they're aligned with what I'm, what I'm doing. And so they're more likely to, to uh, you know, purchase something that you have or, mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. jump into the opportunity that you're giving them. So mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to say that, like when you really think about that, a lot of people will contact somebody. This is kind of sales or 101, but it's like they'll contact somebody, they'll get their information, they'll email them, then they might send them a proposal or a quote for something or a sales sheet. And then they'll make one follow-up call and, and that's okay. it. And, and honestly, that's 10%. So uh, we were listening to somebody the other day who was talking about, you know, um, you know, the 20% above and beyond you go is the difference between just kind of being, you know, the average to greatness. It could be just that last 20% is the difference between being average and being great at what you do. So, so um, just to kind of wrap this up, um, would you say that it's harder or easier to sell something at a higher ticket or a lower ticket price? Does it take more effort to sell something that's worth more or more effort to sell something that's... Well, when I think of my career over the years, when it started, I was selling smaller ticketed items. And so I think that there's, you spend a lot more time on that. There's a lot more no's. Um, when you get into things that are higher ticketed, you typically know more about what that client probably needs. You have an understanding of their business. You've done a bit of research. 
it's way easier to sell larger ticketed items. Yeah. And it's really like this kind of almost the same amount of time. Absolutely it is. And you want to know what something, and just for you guys to think about, um, it's funny, like if something is priced too low, people tend to think that there's something wrong with it or mm -hmm. it's not worth it. So I remember being, I don't know if we were in Vegas or where it was, but I saw this sign for like helicopter rides. Okay. And I think it was like $30 or something like mm -hmm. that. As soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, what is wrong with that plane? Like that helicopter, like it's on sale, meaning like it's going to crash into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> There's no way that I'm getting in it. Yeah. I bet you there were a lot of people who thought the same thing. Yeah. It's just subconscious, right? Yeah. Now, if it was, you know, uh, $300, I probably would have been like, babe, we should do this, right? No, like, but I'm that telling you. That sounds like her. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, you also have to be aware of that sometimes. And pricing your stuff that is a value right and you're actually able you know to deliver on and all that kind of stuff at a low price point sometimes is also doing yourself a disservice and yeah. other people yeah. so just to understand mm -hmm. that and be aware of that right because a lot of times we think like oh if, if we price it low then we're thinking that that's how people make their decisions on price mm -hmm. when that's not always the case like you know some people might buy it because of the price, but they might be not your mm -hmm. ideal, you know, client or customer audience at all. And that may turn into a nightmare for mm -hmm. you, right? But what is that saying? People pay to play, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. See, and the way I would look at that, it, my brain's going this way, so hopefully I can share it, but it'd be like, okay, you've got a helicopter ride, and what are you getting with that? Do you get to spend time with the pilot and you actually communicate that in what you're selling? Do they get to do a tour of the aviation facility? Like I'd put a whole bunch of value together around that helicopter ride and then price it at a higher premium where someone's like, wow, I get all of these things. A lot of times. But I'm just, what I'm know, saying is just to be aware. If you have a sign out there and you're sure. saying like, oh, meat's on sale for a dollar. <laughs> I mean, Ed does buy that stuff, but I'm Her like, stuff. no, we're going to die of poisoning. <laughs> so I wouldn't even eat it, but <laughs> okay. just be aware right. of certain situations. Yeah. That's all I'm But I can say. see that, right? It's like, okay, what's the angle here? Why is it so cheap? And that is something that you do have to really think about and, and really understand, you know, the product you're selling and how you're price positioning it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. So I don't know how long we've been going now. As much as I like to think that everybody loves to listen to every last word that we're saying, I think we should wrap this episode up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we will have plenty more to come. So I'm hoping that you guys got some, you know, good value bombs out of this. Make sure to, you know, leave us, leave, leave us some comments, right? Yeah. Uh, leave us a review on our podcast, The Chris and Ed Show. If you're watching it on Facebook, Give us some likes, show us some love, and also give us our, the cyber hug, please. We're also going to be on our YouTube uh, channel where we actually are going to start focusing on trying to grow that. So, uh -huh. if you want to subscribe and see some more of this, you know uh -huh. what to do, there right? There you go. All Anyways, right. have a fantastic day. Thank you. You always copy me. Uh, no, that's my signature. Uh, copy. <laughs> signature. This morning, she's. Putting on her outfit, and she's like, "Please don't wear white. I'm wearing white." I'm such a great like, leader. And, all right, and you know what? I'm just gonna to wear like black, black and white. Anyway, sorry. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.